people comment to my videos and for some reason sometimes YouTube doesn't allow these comments to go through so I cannot react to them. Uh, I'm sorry for that. Why and who was Jesus praying for when he was nailed to the cross? In Luke 23 we read, Then Jesus said, Father forgive them for they know not what they do. Was Jesus praying for the Jews who rejected him? Now Jesus was praying for the ones who crucified him. But people say, see, the Romans were the ones who killed Jesus. No, the Romans killed Jesus only by the will of the Jews. Even the Roman Pilate said, I see no fault in this man, but the Jews kept on shouting, crucify him, crucify him. They even said, let his blood and the blood of our children be upon us. Pilate even gave them a choice. Who do you want me to set free? Barabbas or Jesus? And he shouted, Barabbas, Barabbas. Why? Who was Barabbas? Well, it is always said that Barabbas was just a criminal, a murderer, and he was therefore in jail. No, Barabbas was one of the rebellious bad figs of Israel. Israel had two figs, the good figs and the bad figs. The good figs were the ones who understood God's law. They were righteous and they also understood God's judgments, the yoke of God on Israel because of disobedience. Therefore they understood that the repentance was the way to freedom. The bad figs of Israel, they didn't want to repent, they wanted to rebel against Rome. They did not understand that Rome was a judgment of God for their rebellion. And Barabbas was one of their leaders. Barabbas was a man who did not want to repent, rather stay in this new religion that stemmed from Babylon. It was a religion that claimed to believe in Moses, but mixed it up with Babylonian traditions. And Jesus did not say, Father forgive them. No, it was someone else who God was going to forgive. For in Matthew 28 we read, Early in the morning, as Jesus was on his way back to the city, he was hungry. Seeing a fig tree by the road, he went up to it, but found nothing on it except leaves. Then he said to it, May you never bear fruit again. Immediately the tree withered. So they were cut off. They were no longer going to be part of God's kingdom. They were going to wither away, no longer be a part of Israel. In Matthew 12 we read, Wherefore I say unto you, All manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men. But the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. And whosoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him. Neither in this world, or better translation, age, or in the age to come. What is the age to come? Christianity teaches it's this world and then after it they are not forgiven so they will go to hell. This is not what it's talking about. We know this age will come to an end and then the millennium kingdom will come. And after that the great white throne judgment. So they, the Jews said, these bad figs, they, they said to Jesus that you have an evil spirit. Everything you do and say is not from God, it's an evil spirit. They blasphemed the Holy Spirit. So they were not gonna be forgiven in this age or in the age to come. They will be raised up at the great white throne judgment and they will be thrown in the lake of fire. So Jesus did not contradict himself. First, he cursed the bad fig tree. Then he said, you will not be forgiven this age or the age to come. And then when he got nailed to the cross, oh, Father, forgive them anyway. That's not what happened. So who were those that Jesus was praying for? We know that Jesus said, I came for the lost tribes of Israel, the lost sheep of Israel. And we know from scripture that the lost tribes were in Europe, also in Rome. We see that Paul addressed the Romans as being Israelites. Also, for example, Cornelius was a clear Israelite, even though he was a Roman. In Acts 10 we read, There was a certain man at Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band, a devout man and one that feared God with all his house, which gave much 
alms to the people and pray to God always. He saw in a vision evidently about the ninth hour of the day, an angel of God coming into him and saying unto him, Cornelius. And when he looked on him, he was afraid. What is it, Lord? And he said unto him, Thy prayers and thine alms are come up for a memorial before God. So Cornelius was an Israelite. He used to be a lost sheep, but they, he was found. He believed. Do you really think an angel would go, go to a, a, someone who doesn't have God, who doesn't know God? No, the gospel was going to go to the Israelites because they needed to be restored and become a light to the whole world. We see in the book of Acts that many Romans converted and believed in Jesus. They remembered who they were. Therefore, I think the Roman soldiers who nailed Jesus to the cross were lost sheep of Israel, even though they didn't know it yet. That's why Jesus said to the Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. They have no clue what they're doing. But Jesus, but they were forgiven. They could believe in Christ. They were going to be reconciled to the Father. If you are not an Israelite, that means you were never in a relationship with God. And if you never were in a relationship somewhere in the past, you also cannot be reconciled. In Acts 11, we read, And the apostles and brethren that were in Judea heard that the Gentiles had also received the word of God. And when Peter was come unto Jerusalem, they that were of the circumcision contended with him saying, Thou wentest into men uncircumcised, and didst eat with them. And this is the problem with these translations that don't depict what actually is being said in the Greek. So our English translations talk about Greeks and uh, Gentiles, but what do these words actually mean? What did these people in the Greek try to tell us? Well, the word allos, that comes from allophilus, and it means someone in a different nation from the same kind same with gentiles the word gentile means nation it is talking about the lost tribes of israel who were among the nations so in acts 11 there is a difference between the circumcised and the uncircumcised the uncircumcised is not talking about all peoples on the whole world it's talking about the lost tribes who no longer had god's law they became strange people they were no longer considered god's people but Jesus died for them anyway. Jesus died for all of them. That's why there is no difference between a Jew and a Greek. The right translation, a Judean and an Allos. One of the same kind, but who had no longer had the law. That is the difference between the circumcision and the uncircumcision. The ones in Judah who still kept the law and the lost tribes who no longer had the law. But Jesus died for them all. Jesus reconciled them. Not through the law, because the Judeans thought they have to first keep the law. No, it was by an act what Jesus did that he reconciled them back to God. So prophecy was fulfilled that the two sticks would become one again. And now Jesus ushered in with his blood the new covenant where the law is written in your hearts and in your minds. Israel now has a high priest in heaven that is not corruptible like these Levites were. Now we have a better covenant based on better promises. No more animal sacrifice in a temple. We are now the temple of God and we have the ultimate sacrifice of Jesus. Jesus put his blood on the mercy seat and now we can be in a covenant with God in the new covenant. Behold, the days come, said the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Judah was the place where Jesus came through. Israel, the northern kingdom, was lost. Jesus found them. And now the new covenant was there between Israel and Judah. And they became one again in Jesus. So now Jacob, the true Israel, can be a light to the whole world. For Jehovah wants all families of the earth to look upon Israel and worship Jehovah.